Imagine a nation at a crossroads where the echoes of past conflicts merge with the aspirations of a new leader. Argentina stands on the brink of a pivotal transformation as its new president vows to strengthen its military might amidst a sea of fiscal challenges. In today's video, we delve into Argentina's audacious commitment to military modernization. With the world watching, the nation navigates the tightrope between bolstering defense capabilities and addressing pressing economic realities. Join us as we explore the implications of this bold strategy, its potential impact on Argentina's future, and the complex dance of prioritizing national security in an era of fiscal uncertainty. For the year 2023, Argentina ranks 28th out of 145 countries considered for the annual GFP review. This homeland of Diego Maradona has a power index score of 0.4243. Argentina's defense budget for this year reaches $3 billion. Out of its total population of 46,245,668 people, the active military personnel of Argentina are only 83,000, and they don't have any reserve personnel. All Argentine military personnel are divided into 14,000 Air Force personnel, 77,500 Army personnel, and 18,500 Navy personnel. Now let's take a look at the strength of its army, the Argentine Army, in Spanish called Ejército Argentino, has been around since May 29, 1810, four days after the Spanish colonial government in Buenos Aires was overthrown. Currently, the total fleet of the Argentine army is 21,724 units. This includes 414 tanks, 75 self-propelled artillery, 172 towed artillery, and 26 rocket artillery. This dive into Argentina's military strength showcases a nation proud of its heritage, from the soccer fields to the defense sector. Despite the challenges of accurate data representation, the spirit and capability of Argentina's armed forces shine through, reflecting a commitment to safeguarding the nation's sovereignty and contributing to global peace. Let's peek at some of the tanks they have, which I think are absolutely stunning. There's the Tank Argentino Mediano with 231 units, a collaboration between Germany and Argentina. Then there's the SK-105 Kurasir with 118 units from Austria, and the AMX-13 with 60 units from France. As for their armored vehicles, they most notably have 499 units of the M113 from the United States. Then, there's the Panhard AML with 48 units from France, and also 134 units of the Humvee from the United States. In terms of advanced artillery, there's the TAM VCA with 17 units, a joint effort between Italy and Argentina, and the M106 mortar carrier with 25 units from the United States. Their rocket artillery includes 20 units of the Citadef CP-30 from Argentina. And not to be outdone in field artillery, there are the Pop Ganks. They have the OTO Malera Mod 56 with 64 units from Argentina and the Cider 155 Mira L33 Howitzer with 108 units also domestically produced. One of the most significant conflicts in strengthening Argentina's military was the Falklands War or the Malvinas War, which lasted about two months from April 2nd to June 14th, 1982 between Argentina and the United Kingdom. This was an undeclared war over the Falkland Islands, South Georgia, and the South Sandwich Islands. These islands consist of two main islands and several smaller ones in the southern Atlantic Ocean, east of Argentina's territory. Despite the loss, this conflict shocked many because no one expected Argentina, a country perceived as isolated, to go to war against its largest customer in agricultural exports, Britain. It was unforeseen that this nation, which hadn't engaged in serious combat since the 19th century, would challenge a nuclear-capable country. 
After that, Argentina restored its diplomatic relations with Britain. In September 1995, Argentina and Britain signed an agreement to enhance oil and gas exploration in the Southwest Atlantic, eliminating potentially difficult issues and paving the way for further cooperation between the two countries. Additionally, the Argentine military has been tested by several conflicts that not only took a significant toll, but also strengthened its forces. These include the Hope Bay Incident, which was Argentina's aggression in the Antarctic Peninsula in 1952, the Beagle Conflict in 1978 over border islands with Chile, the failed Operation Algecaras in 1982 aimed at sending Montoneros to sabotage British military facilities in Gibraltar and Operation Soberania, Argentina's plan to invade Chile in 1978, among other conflicts. Next up, we have the Argentine Navy, or in Spanish, Armada de la República Argentina. This navy only has four destroyers, nine corvettes, two submarines, and 13 patrol boats. They don't have any aircraft carriers or helicopter carriers. I'm not sure why their naval fleet is quite limited, especially considering their vast maritime territory. Just take a look at the map. Now let's switch gears to the Air Force, known as the Fuerza Aérea Argentina, or FAA for short. The Argentine Air Force boasts a total of 228 aircraft. This includes eight attack aircraft, 24 fighters, 87 helicopters, 24 transport planes, 70 trainers, 13 special mission aircraft, and a fleet of two tankers. Let me spill some details for you. They have 230 units of the Orlikon 20mm cannons, 38 units of Orlikon GDF, and 24 units of Bofors 40mm cannons, all from Switzerland. Plus, they have the RBS 70NG from Sweden, but the quantity is kept under wraps. For their aircraft, they've got three units of the Casa Airbus Military 212-200 Aviocar from Spain, three units of the Diamond DA-42 Twinstar from Austria, six units of the Fairchild Swearing and SA-226, four units of the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan, Grand Caravan EX, and five units of the Cessna T-41D Mescalero, all from the United States. Their helicopter fleet includes 44 units of the Bell UH-1H Iroquois, made in the United States, 5 units of the Aerospatial SA-315B Llama from France, and 20 units of the Bell 206, also from the United States. As for unmanned aerial vehicles or drones, some of the most advanced include 36 units of the Mavic made in China, 6 units of the Lipon M3, and 1 unit of the Tehuelche 320, both of which are domestically produced in Argentina. As we conclude our exploration into Argentina's bold military ambitions, one thing becomes abundantly clear. This South American nation stands at a pivotal crossroads. On one hand, the drive to fortify its armed forces resonates with a deep-rooted desire for strength and sovereignty. Yet on the other, the stark economic realities pose formidable challenges that cannot be overlooked. In this intricate dance between aspiration and pragmatism, Argentina's future trajectory will be defined by its ability to strike a delicate balance. Will the nation's commitment to military modernization pave the way for enhanced regional influence and security? Or will the fiscal constraints prove too daunting, forcing a recalibration of priorities? Only time will tell how this saga unfolds, but one thing is certain. Argentina's determination to carve out its place on the global stage is undeniable. As the world bears witness, this nation's resolve will be tested, its leadership scrutinized, and its vision for a stronger military put to the ultimate trial. In the end, Argentina's journey may very well serve as a testament to the enduring human spirit. 
a story of resilience, ambition, and the unwavering pursuit of national greatness, even in the face of adversity. The stage is set and the world watches with bated breath as this chapter of Argentina's narrative unfolds.